Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me once again. So today we're carrying on our little journey into the uh, bygone era of great classic kits, uh, Matchbox in this case. Um, and we're going to look at the uh, some more of their purple range, pocket money range, armour. So it's the Soviet T-34. Now this of course was quite um, an important tank in World War II, very very uh, dramatic history game changer you could say. Um, the T-34 was of course introduced by the Soviets in desperation at the, uh, you know, their terrible defeats they were suffering at the hands of the Germans in 1941 in Operation Barbarossa. So um, prior to this their tanks were just literally getting blown up right left and centre. They didn't have uh, frankly a chance. Didn't have enough armour, didn't have enough um, you know, heavy artillery on the tank uh, and they just they just weren't quick enough or numerous enough. They brought out this tank, um, which revolutionised tank design in some respects. Because if you look at it, of course, it's got this uh, sloping armour front, which was not common then. I mean, the Tiger didn't have it, and, and the German Panzers didn't have it either. So this was uh, when it first appeared on the battlefield in sort of late '41, I think it was. Um, the Germans were somewhat taken aback because a um, they poured onto the battlefield in great numbers. Um, Soviet production, being what it was of course, was highly organised and uh, you know, thousands of them started appearing uh, and whilst they didn't have a, such a good gun as the German 88 which the Tiger 1 had, this thing could move around really quickly and it had this great front, front alarm and because it was sloped at about 45 degrees it would deflect some shots. Now it wouldn't deflect a close shot from an 88 of course, but at longer ranges it was quite capable of deflecting shots which would you know, skip upwards. And this is a completely new concept so everybody started to copy it and of course the Germans uh, answered this sort of threat with the, the design of the new Panther which came a few months later. But anyway, we won't get into that. That's a talk for another day. <laughs> So, the Soviet T-34 then, let's have a look what we've got here. So this one is one of the, it's not one of the original generation of uh, Matchbox Purple kits, it's one of the later generation. This is from 1976, didn't come out in 73 like the early ones did. Typical, beautiful, dramatic artwork on the front. And you can see what I was just talking about, it's actually a Panzer II, is it a Panzer II or Panzer III? Panzer II, I think. That's been knocked out there by this T-34 and some fighting in uh, maybe Moscow or probably uh, Stalingrad uh, and there's another T-34 riding on behind with some soldiers on the back of it so lovely artwork at the end of this one's PK-82 so it's one of the second tranche of them um, on the top as normal we have got their full uh, sort of uh, artist impression of what it should look like in terms of colouring uh, with its markings and gives you a quick, a quick guide it's basically green in this case but of course you can have it uh, in lighter colours like a white or a, perhaps a bit of a combination. On the rear, typical matchbox again, uh, early generation or even though it's second generation, this is still early generation with a window in the back which is the most attractive box. And then we have the, uh, again, artist's impression of the diorama uh, in its true colours as per if you do not paint it. So uh, I quite like the way they do that because it shows you exactly what you're going to get. and. You know, serious models say, ah, oh, they're a bit cartoonish, but actually they, this has a charm all of its own, which, you know, the Airfix at the time with their horrible flashy kits they were pumping out, you know, rather crude, not well moulded, etc., and didn't have a diorama, just not in the same league. So here you've got colour, you've got diorama. It, it isn't just a model tank, it's a, it's, a, it's a scene of a battle all of its own, so very attractive and very desirable. Um, Tells you there that it's 1976, got the, the date code on it here. And then on the other side, of course, typical thing for Matchbox of the era, they are trying to sell their other products. So in, in this case, it's from the same range. We've got the American M16 half track with anti aircraft 50 cal guns. We've got the Yanked Panther storming through Normandy. We've got the Panzer II, which is knocked out on the front of this box art, as we just saw. Is it Panzer II or Panzer II? It is, it's Panzer II, I was right. Uh, Panzer II knocked out on the front of the box art. Um, each one of these kits you see here, we may well see in a review in the not too distant future. So watch this space, including the Chaffe, American Chaffe, from late in the war on the back. Okay, so I have actually, I should probably tell because I'm shaking, there's no noise, I've actually got the parts out to speed things up for us. So why don't we take a look? First of all, we've got some lovely little 
and it is little, <laughs> little sheet of decals, not much bigger than my thumb if I'm quite honest. Um, here they go and typical of these old matchbox kits, they're actually in very good shape, they've stood the years very very well. Take the cover off like so, it's got T34 written on it and then we've got just two marking options and it basically has what looks like a squadron number and a tank number and that's really it. Um, just have a little bit of, they do tend to put a little bit, they need to give the tanks names. Um, some of them are quite amusing I have to say but I don't speak Russian so I can't tell yet what that says sadly. But anyway we'll move on. Another great thing about this one, it's got one of the original proper first generation style of purple, because it's the purple range. Instruction leaflet, a little bit of blurb saying here, it was introduced in 1940, basically came onto the battlefield in late 41. Um, very good performance, cross country, excellent ballistic range, uh, very advanced armour. Um, and of course this is where you have to remember that you know the British tanks of the era were all you know flat fronted uh, and the German tanks like the Tiger and the Panzer II, Panzer III they all had flat fronts so obviously when this came along it revolutionised the idea of you know everybody everybody apart from the British it seemed it stopped the flat fronted you know the, the German Panther I mentioned they put in a, a sloping armour as well which meant it didn't have to be as thick and the British carried on with this um, strange that we did this but we had this flat fronted even when they brought the Comet out and the Centurion to a degree still a bit flat fronted you know not sloping like this so yeah I think that um, we didn't necessarily learn the lessons that the Russians taught us on this occasion um, but the Germans did and the Americans did obviously with the, the Sherman and the Chaffee they were more sloping Anyway, we move on. So, on the rear, we have got um, the colour. Sorry, the callouts for the decals. This is really so there. You can see the decal positionings, and that won't take you too long. This is about four. <laughs> on the inside, we've got typically your colours being called out. Also, a little colour guy for painting here, telling you to paint the tyres because they're rubber black, and the machine gun and the fence which it crashes through in the diorama, wooden fence, so that's brown and the ones that there's some fence stakes posts that are lying on the floor, they're also brown and don't forget to paint your Soviet soldier with his machine gun um, and of course I say it's either white or green basically, mottle green, yeah or white, so there we go. So in terms of construction what have we got? Unusually with this one you start with the actual gun, 76mm cannon you build that into its sort of, uh, it's like all one with a recoil system and a uh, mantle all built in then you build your main wheels and your idler wheels you then build up your uh, hull which is sort of semi bathtub style, it just needs sides putting on it and then you build in all your wheels and these, all, these wheels all move which is quite cool so the rotating wheels, because they have like a little uh, pivot sort of end cap on them. And then you build your gun that you've already done, build, put that into the turret, plus the turret hatch and the two halves of the turret base. I'm not sure why they split it in half, that's unusual. Then we've got our turret going onto the main top of the hull via its little pivot system, which is like a basically a, it's got a cap pivot and cap system so you, the cap is the only thing that gets glued otherwise you'll glue up the, the whole turret and you've got your uh, stowage boxes and tubes on the side then you put your rubber band tracks on here at stage 7 and then last but not least we put all these ancillary parts including the machine gun um, you've got like uh, exhaust covers um, more stowage boxes and tubes spare track pieces on the side and your machine gun goes on the front and the front driver's hatch and then that whole assembly gets attached to the main now complete hull with its wheels and tracks etc and then you finish off with the diorama so you put your um, fence posts in and you place your little soldier on there and uh, Bob's your uncle you've got this lovely diorama with your soldier running ahead and the T-34 is crashing through the fence in. very good now then, let's have a look what the parts are like. Now I have to warn you, we have rubber band tracks and I built this um, I built this tank. I actually have it 
I should have included that actually. I might uh, I might include a photograph of that later. But here we have uh, not the best rubber band tracks, if I am honest. They're a bit of the nasty sort of variety that we all sort of remember and probably hate. <laughs> They're a bit a bit crude, really. Yeah, a bit nasty, not terribly straight. Even. And the ones on my tank actually were. I built it because it had some very bad tracks actually. And that's one of the reasons I decided not to keep it but to build it. Because if I sold it to anybody I think they'd be a bit cross so I didn't want that. Now then, sprues. We've got a big chunky one here. Uh, obviously we've got this uh, snowy diorama scene where you've got the tank tracks. And what I did with mine is I made it sort of pink. And um, We basically uh, made it look like it was snow and the, the paint was on the mud in the snow because you know that you often have that effect where snow looks a bit pink when it gets brown mud in it. But we've got a lot of parts here, so here's the um, here's the pieces of the fencing that's knocked down, and again the moulding here is really really good, very very cleverly thought out and very well executed. You see the tank marks from the tracks there where it's going to sit. And then on the other parts you've got these stowage bins we talked about. The many, many wheels, main drive wheels. You've got your idler wheels here and your main driver sprockets at the front here. Here I should say. Uh, and then you've got the re reverse uh, back side of the wheels down below. And these are all the little caps that go with it. And then we have the other sprue, which is da, 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 all the other parts. So we've got all the sides here for the uh, the sort of pontoon sides of the uh, the hull. You've got the lower hull here. That's the base, the floor of the tank. And then we've got your fence posts that you're going to paint brown, brown wooden fence posts. You've got the turret here which looks pretty good I'd say nice shape Soviet soldier here and uh, actually this being white isn't I don't know sure how well it's picking up on the camera it's not the best colour for plastic um, you've got your machine gun here which gets mounted on the top quite a heavy calibre one uh, you got your driver's hatch here uh, that's the Hatch that goes over the engine at the back, I think it is. No, that's the main hatch. Sorry for the for the top of the of the turret here. That's the hatch there. Uh, and then you've got your gun here. So and then just just that one to our ancillaries, aren't there? Things like the uh, the exhausts, etc., etc. Uh, and then the main piece, of course, is the top of the hull itself. And here you've got all your details. So. Quite well done actually, it's, uh, there's a fair, fair amount of detail there, you've got the grills over the engine, uh, engine hatch covers, you've got your the glasses around the machine gun at the front, um, and you've got tower hooks and you've got uh, various little hatches and pivot points, there's an access hatch for the engine at the back there, that's pretty good to be honest. Now, of course, today it's been a bit remiss of me because I've forgotten um, to bring you the finished example. So I'm going to do that because I think it will add something. People will enjoy it. So if you'll excuse me for just a moment, I'm just going to pop you over here. Whoops, I know this is going to seem a bit strange. Bear with us. Be right back. Can you see the proper finish out? Okay, sorry about that intermission. Just bear with me a moment. Whoop. There we go. I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah. Ta da! <laughs> sorry about out of breath, having rushed out there for you. Right, here we have it. So, this is the finished kit. And I've got to say, I really enjoyed it. I actually built this on New Year's Day about five years ago. 
and I really enjoyed building this tank. It was one of my favourites. Again, it's the diorama that makes it. So this time I made a little bit more effort. I did a little bit of weathering. Nothing fancy, just basic stuff really. But it just has this sort of character to it, doesn't it? With the diorama and everything. It brings it to life a little bit. and It's just uh, the soldier there, you know, you've got other tank marks. So it looks like a, a proper scene from a battle, you know. I can't fault it really. I think it's an absolute dream of a little kit for the, again, for something that would have cost, you know, when it came out in 76, perhaps no more than about 65, 80p, thereabouts. It's really a nice kit, you know, it's got its turning turret, everything works. It's great. It's absolutely fabulous. Anyway, I'll show you the back actually, because I didn't show you the rear, did I? Let's just show you, so you can see the back side of it as well. There we go. So, yeah, it's quite a nice kit, and in that diorama form, you know, it's, it just works on the diorama, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's one of Matchbox's better ones, and they're mostly good anyway, in fairness. So there we have it. Sorry that I forgot that before I actually started filming. Um, just suddenly occurred to me, I thought, well, I've got a really nice example, I ought to show it to you. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed the video overall and uh, thanks for joining me. If you did enjoy it, please give us a like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, there'll be more of these coming along for you to, there's quite a few on there that I think I have, uh, that are advertised on the box. So uh, we'll try and, in due course, I'll try and wheel those out for you as well. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for joining me. Uh, I give that, you know, I think the tracks are better. I'll probably give it nine and a half out of 10. The tracks are the thing that let it down a lot. They're a bit rubbish, but the rest of it, I mean they're adequate, you can see that mine are, if you look, I should have said this, if you look really carefully you can actually see that they are a bit defective, just what I was talking about earlier, so you know I'm not pulling your leg, if you look very carefully at the, towards the front of the tracks, you can see that mine are a bit, a bit sick, <laughs> uh, obviously been through some, perhaps some fairly heavy battle damage this one, but as I say, it would get a 9 out of 10 plus, um, but perhaps we'll say 8 out of 10 because the tracks are a bit naff. Don't be put off by that though. Now this interesting point I should just make, that this one I made wasn't the Matchbox, but the, the later issue Revell. So this is all one colour green, because I didn't want to spoil this classic mint example that I've already got here. So you can do the same, you can buy the Revell issue. I can't remember the model number, but if you look it up, 76 scale Revell T34, you'll find it, and it's only about five pound now, only. A bit dearer than when it was new. But that's the way to get it. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Um, I'll be along soon with some more interesting videos, I hope. Feed to share and enjoy. And in the meantime, thanks very much for being with me and hope to see you soon. Thanks a lot and bye for now.